Okay, so let's talk about rings, all right? There's a couple of different ring shapes that we need to understand. Um, it comes in many different wax profiles. So we've got a concentric hole here where it's a uniform thickness all the way around. And over here we have an eccentric hole, meaning that there's more material on one side than on the other. So we've got a thin spot for the bottom of the band and a thick spot for whatever detail. And then there's the flat top ring. And so these are all good options, but it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So understanding when you're making a ring, what are the concerns you have when you're doing the design? If you're going for something like relatively delicate and lightweight, uh, how much wax do you need to begin with? If you're going for something that's got a little more bulk and body, um, you know, how wide do you want your ring to be? And then in terms of functional use, um, there's, a strong leaning to try and make the interior hole uh, perfectly round, like, you know, like this. But when you go to put the ring on, depending on your knuckle, you may find that um, your knuckles aren't really perfectly round, and so this ring doesn't lay on your hand the way you'd expect. So a great example of that is this ring here, where although it looks relatively uh, circular, it's slightly elliptical because of the knuckles. It goes on sideways, right? So if we put it on, we put it on sideways and then turn it so it rests the way we want. And this um, width is slightly narrower than the height. And so that locks it in place and allows the ring to lay uh, in a certain way depending on the knuckle form. So take a look at your fingers before you make that decision and decide what, what type of ring it is you want to wear and how you want to design it accordingly. But when you go into the waxes, depending on what you're doing, um, you can shape some regions thinner or thicker, deeper or shallower, and that's going to give you a wide range of what you're trying to accomplish in terms of shape. So if you want something lightweight, uh, usually it's going to change shape no matter what you do. Uh, the wearer tends to wear things out of circle very quickly. But in terms of design, oftentimes you'll find that this bottom part of the band is much thinner and narrower than the rest of the band. And that's to accommodate when you're wearing the ring. Um, during flexion, right, the, the meat of your finger tends to overlap that area. And so if this region is too thick, you'll find it's very hard to wear that ring comfortably. Um, so with wide band rings, when you go to put them on, you want to make sure that there aren't any sharp edges, nothing is digging in, or it's sitting proud of this tiny space on the finger that tends to catch most of the rings. So you can either go with a, a long extended band with a soft, smooth profile, or you can go with a really narrow band so it just fits within that tiny space. So um, in terms of deciding your shape, you got to figure out what you want to put on top, uh, how much material you need on top, and whether or not you want something that's concentric and uniform and even, like if you're just doing a repeating pattern, that might be a good way to go. But if you have a stone setting or a concept you want to put on the top, usually these give you more options for how you're going to attach material or designs or set stones or incorporate other things. So um, we'll start there.